Right, so there's a bit of video footage going around. I don't know if you might have happened across it. You, you might have seen it. We're back to Partygate again, of course, aren't we? The first actual video footage, however, seen of the goings-on at one of these lockdown parties, though. And as much as the mere knowledge that these parties existed and happened have infuriated and appalled people, photographs did even more so. Uh, a picture paints a thousand words, after all. But actual video footage, people actually moving and seeing legitimately what they were doing at one of these parties. Someone was stupid enough to take video footage of the happenings going on at one of these <coughs> rule-bending, as they're calling it, do's. Fury beyond anything thus far seen, I think, sums it up. As the Tories breaking rules they held us to get dragged up again, and the ante gets up, as we saw exactly what they were getting up to, just how raucous, as the mainstream media is calling it, really were. They were raving like their lives depended on it, partying like it was 1999. Some of us lost loved ones, dying alone in hospital while they partied. Some of us lost our livelihoods and businesses whilst the Tories partied. Some of us suffered with mental health issues. Others feared for their own safety as they had underlying health conditions, all whilst the Tories partied. Hospital staff contending with dodgy PPE they've been supplied with. The proper stuff so rare in some cases it was actually kept under lock and key fighting a losing battle against the virus, urging people, pleading with the public to please, please, please follow government advice. And all whilst the Tories themselves partied. We did as we were told. We understood to be, it to be in our best interest that we did just that. All doing our part whilst those running the country did not, laughing and jeering about breaking the rules, dancing drunkenly and taking dodgy camera footage as well now coming back to bite them deservedly. People who think they are better than us, that they didn't need to follow the rules they set for other lesser people, mere mortals, people they considered to be inferior to themselves, of course. This government is so appalling, so rancid, the thought of having to wait until the end of next year to get rid of them just seems too much to bear these days. But why are we only learning about this video footage now, though? So much time has passed since this all kicked off, since Party Gate began. Why now has this video footage only come to light? And is there more to come? And if so, why then are we still waiting for that? Now, the video footage we have seen relates to the party held at Conservative Party headquarters, no less, head Q, HQ, on the 14th of December 2020. It was the Christmas party for the Tory London mayoral candidate, Sean Bailey, and the video footage features his campaign team. The people featured in the video, the same people featured in this rather famous photograph now. Bailey himself in the centre there in the white shirt stood just behind Tory donor Nick Candy with his glass raised and the daft look on his face. The video footage itself featured others featured in that photograph, like Mr Christmas Jumper at the front there, drunkenly dancing with the lady in red just in front of Bailey. The guy lying on the floor in the obnoxious brace is also featured in the video footage and was Bailey's campaign manager, Ben, ben Mallet. Those filming it were held having a discussion, and it was made clear, as long as we don't stream, that we're, like, bending the rules. <laughs> and then laughing about it. Bending the rules. Bending the rules! That's like saying Boris Johnson is guilty of the occasional white lie. Or Keir Starmer sometimes keeps a promise. It is a laugh in the face of everyone who took the rules seriously, and a gross insult to everyone who did so, and we're still touched by the pain of loss. Now, Bailey himself does not feature in the video footage. He claims to have left before it was taken. It turns out that was a lie. He was there until 10 p.m. He's also issued a statement via a spokesperson on this saying, this is an old story. We repeatedly apologise for the event at the time. It was subject to a nearly year-long investigation. The matter is closed. Closed? Do you think so, Sean? No, it flaming isn't, Sean. On the day this happened, Matt Hancock, the then health secretary, had put out a statement at a press conference saying everyone should minimise their social contacts. People of all ages can spread this disease. This moment is a salutary warning for the whole country. This isn't over yet. Unless, apparently, you're Sean Bailey and his campaign team, though, eh? Or Boris Johnson, obviously. The police investigation by the Met into this particular event, though, found no issue with it, due, as it happens, apparently, to a lack of evidence. No evidence, apparently, or not enough of it. You would think the photo would be enough, surely. It is clearly showing the rules being breached at the time, social distancing not being observed. They're all too close together, and you can see their faces. You can see how they are. 
We've been out of the second lockdown by less than a fortnight at this point, and to little or no surprise whatsoever, restrictions started tightening again just days afterwards. However, photograph aside, if the photograph wasn't enough for the Met, and goodness knows why it wasn't enough, the camera never lies. It ought to be open and shut, surely. But where was this video then to back the photo up? Why, as part of the investigation, was it not presented? Surely not doing so is withholding evidence and is perverting the course of justice. Will the person who owns the footage now be prosecuted for that very serious crime also? On the other hand, of course, we can look at this a completely different way from the other side. This is the Met Police we are talking about, after all. For all we know, they saw this video footage and still decided to do nothing about it. You'd hardly put it past them, such as their trash reputation and their bizarre ruling when the photo was already in the public domain, would you? Now, Sean Bailey pulled out of the running to be London mayor after the photos came out over this party. He'd also done himself no favours in the media, as various interviews have come back to haunt him since. One of which, given to Talk TV's resident motormouth, Julia Hartley Brewer, discussed what the likelihood was of people holding parties over the Christmas period. And the fact the lockdown rules won't work, in her opinion, it was always her opinion, always against them as she has been. She asked Bailey more and more parties, especially held by young people, because they're bound to be more to blame than others, that they can't go out to any hospitality venues at all. Basically, we're going to see parties at home. We're going to see illegal raves without social distancing, without sanitizer. We're probably going to see a greater spread because of these rules. Her opinion, naturally. And you can see as sure she gets. Bailey responded that ultimately it is up to the individual. If you're a grown-up adult, you need to make a decision about what you do with your family and your friends. You can rely on the government, and that's fine, and they give us rules. But ultimately, what you need to do if you're nervous, keep your family safe, and everybody should stick to the rules. He gave that interview the day after the party, the morning after the night before, to know it to all intents and purposes. So no, Sean! Why should this be considered old news and get buried? Especially when you are now being made a lord in Boris Johnson's honours list. And Brace's boy, Ben Mallet, is getting a gong as well. Rewarded for failure and rewarded for breaking the rules. Typical Tories, isn't it? But why now? Why is this video footage suddenly come to light now? We still want to know this. Perhaps the person who took it felt they weren't getting adequately rewarded for their efforts. All of a sudden, the video crosses the desk of somebody at the mirror who first published the footage, a bit of revenge for being spurned from a gong. But then I'm also consciously aware of the fact much of the Partygate material that initially came to light also came from the Mirror. And they had some of it, apparently, for up to 12 months before they started to release it. And then when it did get released, it was being dripped out to us, a little bit at a time, bit by bit, prolonging the story, dragging out the agony for so many of us, dragging out the information we were getting, withholding it until it benefited them to drop something, is how it felt. Now, you can argue checks were needed to... Uh, to ascertain the veracity of such stuff. Nobody wants litigation, after all. And that is perfectly fine and legitimate. But you can also argue that the longer a massive story like this gets dragged out, the more financially beneficial it is to a mainstream paper. The more they can cash in on it. And I think this is why the sudden appearance of this footage has prompted a few commentators to suggest there could be more footage coming, because this is how the mainstream news sources behaved previously. Profit before news, but it, it leaves me wondering how long the Mirror may have had this video too, given how they conducted themselves before, and why the timing of its release now may have ulterior motive. If Sean Bailey wasn't on Boris Johnson's resignation's honours list, if Rishi Sunak hadn't signed off on him going into the House of Lords, Sunak obviously knew about the party, the photo of this party had been around for ages now. Yet despite this, and despite the knowledge of two people featured in that photo being put forward for awards, he didn't quibble it, didn't stop it, didn't interfere with it. He just signed off on it. Would we have ever seen this footage if there wasn't damage to be done against the government as the media seems to be moving against them increasingly? There's a consensus in this country that Johnson's honours list should be ditched, having been found to have misled Parliament. I totally agree. Setting a precedent as the first Prime Minister to do so, that he should be stripped of this privilege in response to that. And nobody, frankly, he suggested for a period should be considered for one based on his recommendation, what his word is worth and how damaged the government and this country has been as a result of his behaviour. He has completely tarnished the award system, and Sunak signing off on it has just reinforced that, more so than the system already was damaged. Sunak won't do it, though. That has been confirmed today, incidentally. He will not scrap Johnson's honours, despite the fact honours can be forfeited on the grounds of criminal conviction or bringing the system into disrepute. Given how many disreputable people have awards like this now, how many Horrible people have knighthoods or OBs or MBs. It's a really low bar now 
too, be too disreputable for one. The whole system, frankly, now needs ditching and restarting at this point so that people genuinely deserving of recognition actually get the awards. But this would also be setting a precedent as well. And his eventual successor, Sunak's eventual successor, might choose to do the same to him in time, after all. And he's surely got favours owed to people who helped him to get where he is today. It won't be good for him afterwards if he can't make good on his promises with the old peerage or two, will it? He's also a weakling, of course, who could possibly forget that, who's afraid to rock the boat lest it affect his ability to still lead the country, reliant on Johnson backers supporting him on the back benches to keep him in post, as he very much is, and desperately wanting all of this mess he's dealing with to go away, but it isn't going to. With footage, again, new video footage coming out, now exposing Sunak making transphobic comments at the 1922 committee, now circulating on social media as well, the mainstream media is very much appearing to be moving towards that change of government. This Tory one now finally having become too unstable for them. But with Starmer waiting in the wings to take over, Beergate, let's not forget, he got away with that one, didn't he? Despite Durham police having apparently been lent on to let him off. Their police and crime commissioner being Labour... And Starmer with an authoritarian streak a mile wide. Is he really so much better? I don't think so. As much as it is right, this footage has come out finally, so we can condemn the guilty parties for it. The timing is sus. And I just feel there's so much more we are not being told. There's an agenda at work here, perhaps. At least not until it is once again convenient to learn something else. And after you've liked, shared and subscribed to the channel, nourished by the food for thought you've been given, inflation free at that, I wouldn't mind a bit more. Stick with the channel, have second helpings and check out this recommendation here where the Institute for Government's latest report has given Sunak a proper pasting over Eat Out to help out. Alternatively, there are hundreds of videos here for you to watch on all manner of subject matter. Check out the playlist for more and I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.